This episode of MME Notes is brought to you by GoDaddy. Man up and get your 295.com with code 295NUTS. Defense Soap. Use code MMA Nuts for 15% off your entire order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 150. One, five, oh, 50, 50, 50. My name's Ingo Weigel. I'm back around this MMA show by my fans, for MMA fans. We're walking live between serious and ridiculous with a ridge hand strike. Uh, <laughs> I injured my toe. <laughs> Stefan Mateau. You're yes. six three Mateau. I Fucking poke. Kick his ass. Dude, seriously, let me ask you this before. What? I know we're going to get into it in a little bit after news, but what the fuck is up with this UFC 159 like oh. ridiculous, curseness, weird, crazy? What happened last night? I don't know. Let's well, hold off. What on did it. we watch? Stuff. Stuff. Is the show going to be cursed because of what happened at the UFC 159? Might as well just go check if everything's recording now. <laughs> everything's good. Are you sure? No. But I see red lights. Is that good? Is it a district over here? It's all good. We got hookers in the Woo! background. They're, they're flashing their tits at us right now. I Maybe wish I like could show them. Those pole thingies in the background with the poles. You know? What do you mean? Poles? Like stripper poles? Pole action. Oh, they come down from the ceiling and ladies yeah. are dancing behind us? Yes. That's going to be a whole new set of redesigning of things. Constantly. <sighs> How do we week. pay them to do that for a whole hour? Or an hour and a half in the case of last episode? This show <laughs> will probably be an hour and 17 minutes. I hope not. That's too long. <laughs> it won't be that long. Uh, so, what's going on with you? Any news? Or are you uh, chit chat with some casual chit chat? Right. What's well, going on? Let me on, start. Ingo? I've been trying to avoid this. I what? got locked out of my fucking house last night Why coming back from USC. My wife gets paranoid when I'm not around. She locks everything. Apparently, she forgot to unlock the screen doors. I have one on my garage and on the front. So, I could not get in the house. So, in lieu of like waking up everybody, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to sleep in the garage. So, <laughs> so, I turn off the light and I didn't realize how actually dark it was in the garage. So, I'm listening to the Rogan podcast with GSP and them talking about aliens and I literally freaked myself out I, did you have a lapse of time then <laughs> i don't know i had to turn it off i put, ended up putting music on because i was like this is too creepy him talking about losing time and everything else and my wife did wake up sometime at 2 30 in the morning and yeah. ended up like you know coming out and then like what are you doing in here i'm like i don't know you fucking no, lock me up jerk uh, it off no, i don't know yeah no, at least i had wi-fi because my wi-fi reaches into my garage so i got nice. fast internet it's all good but that that sucked so but I'm 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 here to live to don't tell. Do you have about like it. extra keys or? Yeah, but the screen doors don't have. You keys. don't have a key from the outside no. for the screen doors. No. Mm. It's yeah. a problem. Yeah. Well, if you're a burglar, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they so, just stick their hand right through it anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's glass and all that stuff. Their fist, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a better but sound for that. It's more difficult than it sounds. So, unfortunately, that was my night. I came back from watching the UFC here and uh, just. Shit went haywire. I did go to Taco Bell, though. Yeah? <laughs> I nice. walked to Taco Bell. <laughs> you were fucking high? <laughs> no, I'm just like, like, munchies? <laughs> like, Taco I was hungry. Bell? It was, it was on, 12.30. Son. I'm like, I don't know. There's not, That's the closest thing. I'm like, okay, I got to eat something. Wow. Got a couple tacos. When's the last time you had Taco Bell before know, that? A year? Probably years. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, you're going for broke. Did you get anything delicious? I got a there, volcano or? taco, yeah. and I, I got three tacos. I got the volcano taco. I got the Dorito Locos. Ranch and the Dorito uh -huh. Locos regular, and they were all delicious. Man, it was good. The horse meat? I don't know. Who knows what it is? <laughs> but it was good. The Volcano Taco was my favorite. Did you get the cinnamon twist to top it off? Nah. nah. Mexican pizza? Nostalgia. No, dude. Those dude. were the best. Yeah, they were. Those were. I used to eat a lot of Taco Bell in college, but unfortunately, um, or fortunately, I, I stopped that habit. So Yeah. Fast food, not so good for no, you. No. Colon. Well, Powell. It could be if you're stuffed up, you know, and you need to get shit moving. <laughs> White Castle or Taco Bell is perfect for yeah. that. Usually, it's the spicy food. Yeah. Well, I think right it's the you. low quality of food. You know, at those places. Oh well, yeah, it's is it meat or is it not? I don't know. It's usually not. They say the beef is like class D. It's below even like the lowest. It's it's the lowest level you can sell without being like you know, 
And it's probably that. a step lower, but when they come to test it, they bring out this other stuff. grade. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is that, oh, that, that Don't is look old. at this. Don't Maybe look at the man behind the yeah. curtain. And the weird thing was, is hmm. I ordered my food, and literally, I get to the window, and it's already ready. How the fuck do they make it that fast? What do you mean? Just <laughs> waiting. It's crazy. There was no one else there. I was there by myself. How do they just, like, instantly make my food? They're fast, Dingo. Yeah. They've trained. Day and in, yes, day out. I walked to Taco Bell, Taco. and I did not go in, and I stood at the drive-thru. <laughs> That's, have you ever done that? No. I used to do that all the time. You never did that? <laughs> Stand at the drive-thru? No. Yeah. Without a vehicle? Yes. Why? I don't know, because it's fucked up, because no one does that. <laughs> it's weird. You know, if you, could, if you have bikes, Bad. you can take your bicycles, and if two people are there, at the same time, you can slam them down, and then it'll actually go off as, as if it was a car. It registers as a car. If you're just walking, you just walk right up to the window. So <laughs> you just knock on the window. Hello! It looked a little nervous, but I'm ready good. to order. It's all good. I figured the walk there would offset the the horrible food, since it is like you know it's a it's a good walk. You know you know uh -huh. the place like Taco Bell's not that close, but it was a nice night. So you had a control. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I get my Taco Bell. Well, thing. I, was like, I was hungry. There was no food. I looked in the garage. It was like. I was like, I had coconut juice. Oh, that's right. You're locked in the garage. Yeah, so, okay. coconut Fair juice. Enough. You got to do something. Like... What else is open at that time? Nothing. Right. Yeah. All right. So, I get you. There was no choice. You know? Anyway. It's all good. Such is my story. I may have to go back to Taco Bell tonight. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> that was man. So it was good. so good. See, now you're like laced on it. <laughs> yeah. It's similar to sucked in. drinking like Coca-Cola. Yeah. You drink that and it's very addictive. Why is that? They put coke in it, man. Fuck yeah. Woo! What are you drinking tonight? Uh, well, I've been on this IPA kick. I got Firestone Double Jack. Not as good as what I had last night, which was the drink by 517, 13, which was delicious. This is a little bit slightly hoppy. <sighs> it you know, looks tough. You got two fighting. There's a bear. Tiger. Yeah, a lion or something. Yeah, it's probably a lion. I wouldn't get this again. So don't the, drink this. The guys at Benny steered me wrong on this one. He's like, this is my favorite. And he probably says that about all the twenty dollar beers. You have to watch. No, this was like eight bucks. But you think about it. It's hmm. seven percent alcohol. It's like over. It's a pint plus six ounces. You know, it's like a bottle of wine almost. It's not bad. Eight bucks. He goes getting hammered. I'm a little bugged. But that's all right. It's all good. <laughs> I'm, see, it's empty. But I still have some left, so by the time the show's over, yeah. I'll be drunk. This this will be my ticket to Taco Bell. <laughs> right here, right here. Yeah, that is. You've got a golden ticket. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna avoid that. I'm gonna go a different route, so I don't have to drive by there. <laughs> Probably a smart move. You're yeah. on a fucking so, tough fate. With I'll go two nights in a row. That's a fucking heart literally. attack waiting to happen. I survived it. I was fine. No crazy bowel movements, so things are good. But it's just it's just saving up for okay. like a blow up. Monday morning is going to be like, oh my God. 15 <laughs> pounds of shit just brewing and brewing, <laughs> just waiting. And well, it's all good. Backed up. So What's going on with let's you? Let's hit some news. Let's all hit right. some news. <laughs> Did you see uh, Bruce Buffer? It was on a cover of Fighters Only magazine. He's popping bottles and banging models, something no, like that. didn't and see it. You told me. I didn't read the article because I don't have the magazine anymore. It's a good magazine, actually. I Why not? That. What happened? Uh, just my subscription ran out, and I never renewed. Oh. I could you use a, a free gratis copies. copy of that, and I could talk about it. Oh. But uh, apparently, this guy is just fucking slinging dick, as Rogan would say. Good all you, over. Buffer. And they asked Dana White about it, and he's like, yeah, I saw it. Really? It's interesting. Mm. It's interesting. So what do you feel about the guy? I think it's fine, right? No, he's single. He's, single. Right? he's just banging checks. Is there a problem? He's he's a he's a well dressed man. He seems like he's slightly eccentric. He, he doesn't own more than what 150 suits. Yeah, I mean he seems like the old Dean Martin, Frank mm -hmm. Sinatra kind of style guy, and just you know he's probably loaded. He's he's you know why not? What else is he gonna do? I don't know. I like I guess he likes to play Call of Duty on his laptop. That's what Joe Rogan said, too. <laughs> yeah, he's he got the Alienware. Yeah, he's got the in. hardcore laptop, and he plays at the airport and waxing dudes. But, I mean, when you're, when you're loaded and you're, you're well off and you dress well and you, you're traveling a lot, what else are you going to do? 
when he has the ladies in bed, does he fucking set it up like it's a fight? <laughs> it's time! <laughs> and he fucking dials it out. I'd love to know. I would love to ask him that question. He fucking like, he gets the cars out, he it? sets the two ladies off on each side. He, he's corner. probably doing four at a time, yeah. In this Fighting. corner, we've got Sapphire and Diamond. In this mm. corner, we got Ruby and Emerald. They probably request that shit, right? Fuck yeah. yeah. Come on, Bruce. Do your voice for us. And give it to us, Bruce. Give it to okay. us. It's all good. So that's running in the background. And then I saw this interview with Nate Diaz, or read about it, and he says, i got to throw it up on the screen. Nate Diaz saying that Josh Thompson makes bitch-ass lady sounds when he fights. And here's what he said. He was scared shitless when I was fighting him. It's unbelievable how scared he was in there. He was running for his life. He was making bitch-ass lady sounds, and that's not bullshit. I'm not here talking shit on him. That, this is reality. He was making woman sounds. He was running out of the clinch. I hit him in the face, and he was going, uh, uh, eh, making woman sounds I've never, ever heard out of a man before during a fight. I'm here in his corner telling him to smile, and I'm like, yeah, smile, motherfucker. And not a single smile came out of his mouth. He had a look of panic the whole fight. You have to be in there, fight these guys to know that. This is how it went. I've seen him in other fights. He was smiling at the other guy, bouncing around. He didn't have no time for that against me. He was frantic and trying not to get his ass whooped. He said a bunch of other shit in there, too, but that's kind of curious. Like, like by curious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, take your beating and move on. What is it with the Diaz brothers? They, they just can't take a lick it. They got to keep coming back. And yeah. It's not making excuses, but... You, they're still going after the people they lost to. Just take your loss and be a man. Well, you can't talk shit on the guy who beat your ass. I, it I doesn't think, work. <laughs> I figure, yeah, it's, it's funny cool. as fuck, but it just no. Cool. If you're beating his ass, okay, you're still a dick for talking shit about him, but at least you can talk shit about him. But when the guy beats your ass... It was uh, a fucking <laughs> devastating head kick. Knocks you out cold. Oh, uh, stopping you for like the first time in a long fucking yeah, time. Yeah, I, I don't think you can talk shit about him. Well, you can <laughs> if you're yeah. Diaz, apparently. Yeah, they get away with a lot of stuff, so I don't know. And then didn't Nate say he wants to have, like, uh, 12 more weight classes? As soon as yeah, possible? he wants, like, a 163 or something. <laughs> it's too confusing. Yeah. Just make, uh, the only one I'll lobby for is, like, the super heavyweight. Just do a 265 plus or 266 plus. No weight limit? Weight? Yes. Open fucking weight. Let what anybody about, fight. What about a lightweight? Like, there's no limit to how small you are. Well, <laughs> it just gets ridiculous because when you're down Midget at the t- MMA 25 fighting. or 15, it's literally jockey fights at that point. What yeah. the fuck? No. We want bigger is better. I don't know. You remember we saw John Dotson working out and we both saw I was impressed. That guy can kick the shit out of us. So I didn't think that little dudes could, but then I saw him in real <laughs> life. Like, and I'm like, Whoa. That motherfucker is fast and athletic. And yes. he'll probably hit me five times before I even got <laughs> Maybe my, ten before times. I even thought about my throwing my first punch. He's <laughs> like, here's you. <laughs> oh. I, I, there's no way. I have no chance. Yeah, no. I have finally come to that realization. Yes. And that's fine. Yes. I'm not a so professional good. fighter. <laughs> I'm just a weekend warrior, and I'm not even that anymore. I just trained in my house. It's all good. Matt Mitrione off suspension. How many days was it? Six, 12, 14? How many? 16. Days? Okay. Two whole weeks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <laughs> in the fighter world, 16 days is like an eternity, Ingo. It is? I don't know. And he has a fight already announced, doesn't he? Yeah, who is it? Shab? Is he fighting? Forgot. Man, I open my mouth and I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those guys. Sure. He's in the mix. It's shop. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll post a correction up later. Yes. Take that. Okay. Then, I'm moving right through. There was an article, it was posted on the Underground. And it was about MMA fighters and their fake or inactive <laughs> oh, uh, oh no. Twitter followers. Hmm. And their research was done by ingrained media. And they found the top five MMA fighters with the most fake or inactive accounts. Yes. Well, let's go backwards. Number five was uh, Michael McDonald with 78% fake. Damian Maya with 79% fake. Ouch. Anderson Silva with 79% fake. Junior Sagano, 81%. And number one, Roy Nelson at 93% fake. Wow. How many followers does he have? Uh, he was in the half million range. Nice. <laughs> well, 
Here's a question now. Do these these guys, should they get suspended? Because that's like uh, taking performance-enhancing drugs. Because oh. they got bonuses for that shit. But you know what? The, they have PR firms, a lot of these guys. I think that's like the MO now is, is the more people you have, the more followers you have, the cooler you are. And it's, it's, it's that problem of PEDs because you, you have like the bars. He, you, this is what I'm trying to tell you. The bar is here. Well, you know my stance on PADs. Uh, I am so strongly against them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but say that. here's a perfect example Go. of this. Where the, really the average is really here. But because all these guys are cheating, now the average is way up here. So now if you're here legitimately, you're actually pretty legit. But because everyone else is up here. You look like shit. You look like shit. And that's not cool. Because then now you got to fucking cheat to get up here too. And then what? You, you give away your integrity and all that stuff. You sell your soul to the devil. That's right. Michael Bisbeck knows what that's about. He might. Not fair. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got Twitter followers. We got Facebook fans. Yeah, and no, I'd say only like half of ours are fake. Only yeah, exactly 62%. <laughs> but we would not be on that list. I'll tell you that. No. Um, but that's the thing. Like, okay, so is 10,000 a good number? Or is 100,000 a good number? Or is it 200,000? Or... Is it 200,000, but you got 98,000 that are fake? I mean, what's the real number? I don't know. It's a PR thing. It so is. If it, I feel like, for me, too, if I look at a person's Facebook page or Twitter page or whatever, and they have tons of followers, like, say, Joe Rogan, even if I don't know Joe Rogan, who's a couple million, I'm like, this dude's legit. Yeah, like, he just passed a million, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, and I believe Joe Rogan does not do fake. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. He may, but I don't think so. Um I think everybody's fake. I think the whole world is on performance enhancing. Yeah, but these guys, these fighters, they have PR people. So it's I true. think that's just the status quo. That's what they do. Ah, you only you don't have enough Twitter followers. No problem. Spend some money. Boom. boom. Here's all three Brazilian money. fighters on that list. Yeah, are they all managed by the same people? Ooh. I don't know. It's curious. Problems. We should just not. We should just move along. Don't talk about it. Moving on. The last thing we should talk about is though, G you, what you mentioned earlier was GSP and aliens. <laughs> because oh boy. It, this was weird. It, I think this was a cool podcast because yeah. you, know, you listen to the Joe Rogan experience. He has GSP on there. And he talks about some shit. But the thing that was probably the coolest to me was that GSP actually watches fights. And he was able, oh, yeah, I remember this fight. remember that fight. And then he asked him about the Matt Serra fight. Like, what did you learn from that? And he's like, composure. Because I got rocked and I wanted to just jump right back in the pocket. Like, I can't believe this guy rocked me. And he like, get me back Good in. Good accent. You know? <laughs> I might have actually almost gotten you, close you this it. time. Oh, you did. It was good. So, it's neat to see that. I didn't think he actually was a human. I thought he was more of a robot. Yeah. I wish he would have expanded more on this aliens because I think there's a little bit more to it. He doesn't want to say anything. I think he doesn't want to look crazy in the public light. Yet he will at some day, yeah, but maybe. he should just say it and go. Well, Joe Rogan was trying to goad him. He's like, ah, you smart guy, Joe Rogan. You come on this, you make me come here, and I say things. And <laughs> well, did you see? He's like, <laughs> he just showed his mental weakness yeah. as he was talking to Joe because he was afraid of Joe because he knows Joe's smart oh, yeah. and can get him to say stuff. Oh yeah, like come on, George. Like I not talk about these now. Come on. It all, but he was, George was saying that sometimes he is driving his car and he goes through lapses where he just it happens misses to me. a Has it ever happened hours. to you? It's happened to me, man, more than once, where it's weird. It's really strange. Like, or have you ever woken up and you swear that you were, you've been awake, but then you look and the clock is like later than, than it, like, like exactly what he described mm -hmm. happens to me quite frequently, actually, or weird. Or have you ever driven like from play, point A to point B and you don't recall that time? And, and that, that's never happened to you? It, it's happened to me a lot. It's fucked up. Sometimes I will drive home from somewhere and I will not remember the entire time I'm in the car. I'll be like, oh, I'm home. What happened? This is really <laughs> weird. That literally has happened to me almost on hmm. a monthly basis, I think. And the, the weirdest thing, that's how I creeped myself out. I had to turn that off last yeah. night because I was in the... In the garage listening to this, I'm like, well, that's fucked up. He's talking about losing time. That happens a lot. Like, I wake up, and I look at the clock, and then I swear to God, like, I wake up, and I look at the clock, and it's two, hour, two three hours later, and it, there's in my head, there's no time that's passed mm -hmm. in, in those two instances. Almost like, you know, I've been awake the whole time, but I think yeah. it's just your head fucking with you. Like, somehow you're sleeping, and you're awake, and I don't know. You're zoned out. 
but Joe was on to something. It's always worse on the nights I, after I've done like jujitsu or something where I'm fi- like physically exhausted. I think like somehow you get into the strange and did, did I actually w- wake up? I don't know. Maybe I was sleeping the whole time. Maybe. You know, but you know, George seems like an interesting guy. I think you should let his freak flag fly. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> it that sounds rhymes too. It's weird. Yes. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. So it, it almost sounds like he's getting anally probed by the aliens, and this may explain, like, the thirst for cock that he has in his throat. Ouch. That water just doesn't quite quench. <laughs> Ouch. I'm just saying. What are you saying, Matt? I'm just saying. It's okay if you're gay, and it seems like he may be, and it, maybe it's just the aliens. Maybe you get used to getting yeah. prodded or plowed by them. I don't know. And not willing to talk about it. I can't come out right now, Joe Rogan. Okay. Give me a year. Give me a year or two. Let me defend my title. Let me have a super fight or not. (sighs) Let's move right along. That's never happened to you where you lost time? No. I don't lose time. Wow. Doesn't happen for me. I'm sorry. Mm. I just take dicks (laughs) (laughs) habitually so I don't lose time. (laughs) Even in the I tank, don't lose time. The flotation tank, like you never like. But know, you're supposed to space out. Felt in yourself there. like losing time. I always feel myself. I don't know. It just happens a lot. Oh, good. I think it's all relative, as they say. You know, like a minute could be ten hours, or it could, or an hour can feel like a minute. You know what I mean? Like, you're making my head hurt, dude. <laughs> you're trying to make me think. Like, like, if, you're, if you're having a good time, like an hour goes by like that. But, oh, yeah. I but know if you're like is. suffering, a minute can feel like forever. Sure. For days. Okay. So. Yes, I agree with that. Okay. I think that's along the same concept. It's just. Does it's, that mean I'm getting anally banged by uh, aliens yes. then? Yes. The entire time. Great, I guess. <laughs> Are they blowing loads? Are they blowing their alien, alien loads, loads all over everywhere. me? It's green jizz, like you wouldn't awesome. believe. It's like when the predator bleeds. Yes. That's how I like it. Yep. Speaking of bleeding. 159 the- <laughs> recap. Yes. Let's get right into it. Attention scores. Oh, boy. All right, so I, I was 7 and 4. Ingo was 6 and 5. The Magic 8 Ball was 7 and 4. So overall, I'm 81 and 47. Ingo, 68 and 60. Magic 8 Ball tied with me at 81 and 47 at 63.2% correct. Bonuses. 65 grand. We got KO of the night, Roy Nelson with his ridge hand. Pat Healy gets sub of the night against Jim Miller. That made me very sad. But they also had one of the greatest fights of the night. And one of the better fights I've seen on the ground in a long time. There was really slick transitions and just overall just craziness between those two guys. Unfortunately... I don't know what happened with Miller, but it seemed like he got tired. I'm not sure. Or Healy just could take whatever he was dishing out, and Miller wasn't prepared for that. I don't know. But Friday the night for sure. Do I look like one of them? <laughs> you might. <laughs> you Jesus Christ. Right. They could, at our time, like, they both had red beards. They both had shaved heads. They're both Irish. Scrap this, they're good they're scrap both white. Thing. But impressive to beat Miller in his hometown yes. and fucking submit him. Yes. Because was that Put the first time sleep, he got submitted? No less. Oh, he's not gonna submit. fucking tap out. Put him to sleep. Jesus time. Christ! I got a big ice ball over here. I got problems, Ingo. This is a show. This is a weird topic. Balls and probing and well, well it's all it's gigantic G- ice ball. Blame GSP. It's all GSP. You wouldn't have ball. fucked everything up. It's all good. Um, we do. We never even actually talked about that fight. We should have. We forgot. It's okay. So. Well, get, let's go back because I want to address a couple things. Before well, let me we start by deep. saying, do you think Leonard Garcia gets cut after this performance? Yes, but I want to go back. I want to go with like go a, even further back. Yeah, okay. I want to go just to a general impression because I want to go back to this. All started at the weigh-ins. Back so. to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember that song? No. Okay. But so Nick Catone misses weight. I think that's is where this all starts. Okay. He misses weight. It's all his fault. Blame him. It's either John Jones or Catone. I'm not sure. I'm going to go with Catone. Okay. So he misses weight, and they have to scratch that fight to start. Mm-hmm. After that, what do we have? We have a fighter take a, like a timeout because he's got loose tape, so he wants to try to recover and get a little extra time. We get a broken thumb or a dislocated thumb. We get two eye pokes that end fights via Gian Vellante, which was technical some decisions. You had the... Kabbalah versus Medeiros. Medeiros had the nasty, mm-hmm. thumb, right? Which was which was gross. Well, he should have shut his mouth. He's going to the ref. Hey, hey, my thumb, my thumb. He probably thought they would pop it back in for him. 
And the oh, doctor's like, sorry. No, we're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> and then we also had a broken toe and some satanic verses. But I think the biggest problem is Kevin Mohall. He, that motherfucker needs to eat a bag of rusty cunts because he fucking dropped the ball. And dicks. All day long. Yes. I like to go cunts because dicks have been rusty overplayed. Rusty cunts. Like, what makes a cunt rusty? It's, you don't want to know. That time of the month? Well, that's, what do they say? It tastes, tastes salty. Like iron, salty and irony. Yeah. Um, yeah, what the fuck? It's crazy. He was the guy who cut off Alan did, Belcher's what? ankle wraps. He was the guy who fucked up the main event. He was the guy who fucked up the Gian Vellante eye poke. Right. Like, there's a trend here. Just saying. And with the John Vellante thing, he fucking gets poked in the eye. And I guess what I've heard from Lorenzo Fertitta said that in New Jersey, they can't give fighters time to recover after an eye poke. Hmm. But, so he gets poked in the eye. Can you see? I can't see. Fight's over! Fucking fight's over! Sorry, like he second, can't fucking see. There was no second question. No shit he can't see. He just got stuck in the fucking eye. He got like finger banged. entire finger was in there. What do you think's gonna happen? Yeah. That's fucking horse shit. So, fucking... You know, in all fairness, he was losing that fight. Well, here's a question for you. It's true, but they got, I mean, the right guy won. But do you think with Stuart Scott being in the crowd and Mike Winklejohn being there, do you think the two eye pokes had something to do with an eye for an eye? Maybe. Because Scott has a glass eye, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm just saying. He's looking a little weird. He was all like... He was, he was air guitar <laughs> or like shadow boxing, but yeah, that's bad. That's the question. Like, I, I keep asking you this. Like what? I know we've posed for photos with fighters before, and I don't think either one of us does the old. We don't do pose. that. I think that's gay as fuck. Like if you're not a fighter, why are you posing as a fighter? I'm just saying. And if you're not a fighter, why are you doing air air guitar or as you call it? Shadow boxing, but air MMA. You're sitting down in your seat, so it's not uh, real shadow boxing. Stuart, Stuart Scott's pretty cool though. He seems like a nice dude. He's got a lot of medical problems. I, we wish him well, but it's just kind of weird to see the whole. Why was he there? Is he from Jersey? I have no idea. It's just represent. This seemed like it was a star-studded event. Maybe because it's John Jones. Was he big on the John Jones? I don't know. Jones in general. Bones knows. It sure bones. does. <laughs> but with and I want to go back to too. Like we're talking about the eye pokes, and New Jersey doesn't recognize them. Yes. Well, <clears throat> you had stated on our last show too, where we talk about there's different rules in different states because mm -hmm. you said. You know, you can't stop a fight when you, if you, you throw a towel in. Right. That's in the rules. It's only up to the ref. And Big John McCarthy tweeted out and said, you can stop a fight from a towel. You can? Where? It, exactly. So that's why I uh, sent an email to Keith Kaiser, who's the head of the Nevada, here we go, Nevada uh, State Athletic Commission, to give some clarification because the rules say this, McCarthy says that, what is it? And he said in New Jersey, or actually in Nevada, the rule exists because someone in the crowd could throw a towel in and cause chaos. So That's true. in Nevada, in most places, the corner man tells the commission inspector he wants the bout stop, and they both go up on an apron, they wave to a referee, who then stops the contest. But why do we not have a consistent set of rules from state to state? This is bugging the well, shit out of me. Well, I thought they have, like, unified rules of MMA. What happened to that? I have no idea. Why can't each state govern its own like little rules? So so now towels work in some states, but don't work in other states. Eye pokes work in some states, but don't work in other states. Mm -hmm. What else? What's next? I don't know. Grunt shots are okay. Balls. <sighs> I don't know. I'm not sure either. Kind of strange. I mean, Winslow. I think Nevada should be the leading like commission. Well, someone needs to step up, and everyone whatever. needs to follow it. Yes. So yes. Who's going to follow them? Everybody. Everyone. Why not? Really. It's all good. It is all good. Watch me take a drink. Yeah. While he does that, let me say one thing. Um, what? Well, I you're gonna, I'm waiting. <laughs> Cautiously. I was trying to give you an uncomfortable silence. I don't care about it. I could uh, go fucking 10 minutes without talking. It not say a word. Me. Just sit here for 10 minutes. Fuck it. Let's no, do it. W which fight do we want to talk about first? Well, we kind of talked about the Healy Miller one. Do yeah. we need to go in any more detail on no, that? No, it's all good. Okay, let's go into the best fight on the card. 
<laughs> hey, did you know Phil Davis's striking was so fucking spot on? You know, he may be the best striker in the light heavyweight They kept division. talking this up a lot, and I don't know what... Vinny does not have the best You're not going to say his last name? <laughs> well, they... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. We're going to call him Vinny M. Magalhães. I think that the, the Brazilian way is Magalhães, but ever they call him Magalhães. Easy. But who knows? It's, it's just M. You're Vinny yeah. M. And just take the it. The thing is, is like, Davis is like light years behind a lot of guys in the division and Vinny is light years behind him so therefore of course Phil Davis looks great on the stand up cuz Vinny has like no stand up so the thing that bothered me is that Vinny had his opportunity to finish the fight he had, he had Phil Davis's back and he couldn't do it so therefore I say you know Vinny back to the drawing board you know I don't know you had your chance man you got him on the ground you, you let him get back up you know, it could have been over there, but he chose not to. And hats off to him for standing in there for three rounds. But it was quite boring, I thought, the whole thing. It was kind of a athletic competition versus a fight. Well, it, was a, it turned into a sloppy striking yeah. affair because you have <clears throat> two guys that are not not going to use their strengths against each other. Well, Vinny can't get the fight to the ground. He didn't really try to take not it to really. the ground. It was just that one exchange. And then yep. Phil was just content with throwing like his strikes. And the challenges I see with him is he doesn't look confident in his striking. He's not no. committing to the game for me. Nope. And I don't want to call someone a career gatekeeper, but I look at him where he was on path like, oh, this is the next guy to possibly beat John Jones, right? And then he fights Rashad to like a horrible decision loss. Yep. And then he has two fights with who Wagner Prado. One was an eye poke, and then he fucking like grappled, and I think he choked him out in the second one. Yep. And then now this fight with Vinny, where he, you would think a young guy like him, his skills should be improving, improving, improving. And I'm not seeing any improvement out of him. It's just like he's plateaued. And I'm not saying he's on the down, but he's just. It's just here, so just hanging around. Where is he gonna go? Like, who does he fight next? Like, how do you even go up? You, you, you were fighting like number one or number two in Rashad, and then now you're fighting these the lower tier guys. Ryan Bader, done fine. <laughs> I'm not even gonna argue. But <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's, fuck, that's man. That's what comes to mind. Ryan Bader. They're both guys in that same like. You're in this quagmire of shit, and yeah. are you gonna come out of it or not? I don't know. Next for Vinny, I don't even have anybody for him. Yeah, well, they need to give him a guy who wants to play on the ground and not play the stand-up game. At uh, at this at 205, who would that be? I'm trying to think right now. Uh, I don't even know. I have nobody for him. For Vinny? He needs to contemplate shit. <laughs> Work it out. I mean, Chael Sonnen are good friends. I think, don't, aren't they roommates? Maybe they should fight. No. Why not? No, no, no. Brother versus brother. Okay. I don't know. They made that movie already. Yeah. It worked well. Oh, and my favorite. You know, Go ahead. I believe that there was a point in this fight where I was like, oh, everyone else is going to throw his overhand right. And it's literally 10 seconds later, he throws the only one of the whole fight <laughs> and it lands Boom! Check Congo. I was like, dude, how do you not see that coming? Who is ref in this fight, too? Well, there's two things to mention. One, I love body contrast because you may have <laughs> like the best body in the UFC with yes. Check Congo, who's like a fucking Greek god, versus Saucy. Roy Nelson with the worst body in the UFC. <laughs> I, don't know, I like Roy Nelson's body. It's all good. It's hot. You can have that. It's like a cheeseburger. Fuck yeah. Tasty. <laughs> okay. That doesn't smell either. Uh, no. It's all good. So, <clears throat> those two things going on. And then what I wanted to say about the refing. I forgot who was the ref. But I remember, uh, didn't Nelson have double underhooks and have a body yeah, lock? Yeah, they broke him up. And he's getting ready to like possibly throw him down to the ground. And then they broke him up. But then right after they broke him up, you got Knock the out. fucking ridge hand. and I don't see how he didn't see that coming. I, I really don't. He, Nelson well, that's is the like, thing. It's, it's like a one-trick pony. It's a Dan Henderson. That's what I was going to say. It's like the Dan Henderson. Put you to sleep. Like, you I'm know gonna... what he's got, but yet it still lands. Yeah. It's impressive. It's beautiful. And Congo, I don't know. A lot of guys online felt like they should have let that fight go another 
five, six seconds just to see if oh, Congo would recover. No. Well, that's what Roy said. He wasn't going to give him the opportunity, so that's why he followed up with strikes because he saw what happened in like, the Pat Berry fight. Psst. He's not going to let him do that. You got to fucking... grab him by the back of the head. Ding, ding, and just start ding. Fuck, face <laughs> fucking him. Eat my oh, cock, oh, you oh, fucking... Oh, oh, oh take it. Take it. Cock. Oh, take my white yeah. cock. I don't know. It's all good. Saying. Next for Roy Nelson. Well, they kind of said that, and Dana said he's either getting Mark Hunt if he wins his fight, or mm. Daniel Cormier. Okay. And Cormier tweeted out that he he accepts that fight. Of course he does. He can win that fight. Nelson didn't look too happy about the Cormier suggestion. He's no. just like. <laughs> Doesn't but I want him and Hunt, but. If Hunt's fighting Dos Santos, right? Mm -hmm. If if Hunt beats Dos Santos, he should get a title shot. I agree. In my opinion. Yes. But I still want to see Roy Nelson versus Mark Hunt. Me too. Chin versus chin? Yes. Belly versus belly? Power versus power? I'm taking Mark Hunt. I'll take Roy Nelson all day in that fight. Good luck with Submission, that. baby. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. Fuck, I bet you Mark Hunt submits Roy Nelson. No way. He will wear that fucker down. Uh-uh. No oh, good. He will. He, he'll key lock that bitch. Okay. Maybe. Sean McCorkle. I'll go say. Hey, he wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Okay. It's for horses. <laughs> <laughs> McCorkle 6'8. I almost uh, dropped my glass, by the way. I just built a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So good. I believe we're drunk on the show. <laughs> Fuck, who cares anymore? <laughs> so good. Uh, Game of Thrones! Oh, yeah. Coming up soon. Yeah. And next, and fuck, what the hell do you do with Congo? Because, dare I say, career, get kipper. Retirement, how old is he? 36? He's 37. Yeah. I'm starting to know their ages. That's scary. I also write their ages down right here. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know that, that one. That might be why. I didn't know He's that got one. notes. Fans, laptop, maybe you don't know the answer to that question. What? I don't know. The age bracket. Oh, I could probably tell you all of them. Oh, I'll, I'll go right now. No. When, we, when we go through the rest of the card, okay. No, no, no. we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Roy Nelson, thirty-six. Next fight, Michael Bisbing, thirty-four. Alan Belcher, twenty-eight. John Jones, twenty-five. Chael Sonnen, thirty-six. Jones is only twenty-five. Wow, oh, he's a little older than that. Oh, I'm I'm fucking on fire. That's scary. on fire. He's only twenty-five years old. Yeah. Oh man, that guy's got a bright future. Maybe. Or something. He doesn't let coke and horrors get in the way. He's married now. <sighs> yeah. Or, or engaged. Oh. And just had a baby. Let's move along. Life is good. Oh, look at this. I'm so sorry about this one. You know what? I, I, I felt I had to... I had to actually rework this slide because Michael Bisbing actually worked his way back into the slide because he was out of it earlier. He's I back in your good graces. In. I got nothing bad to say to him. I just want to know what the fuck is the deal. First problem is Alan Belcher gets into the octagon and he's got his ankles taped with a signature because obviously someone there that's supposed to uh, tape them did it and signed them. Yes. And he has the ankle, whatever, little footsie things on too. And then they say, oh, well, you can't wear those. Let's cut those off. Let's take it off. Let's cut those off. So... Mentally, you've completely fucked the guy. I have the answer. Go. I, go ahead. I know the answer, you do? but go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, apparently, Say. it's up to the discretion of the other fighter whether he would like to allow you or not to have that because it's not illegal, but it's also not technically allowed if the other fighter has a problem with it. So in the sport of gamesmanship, I believe Bismuth Corner was like, no, 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 cut those off. Yeah, and but this, this should happen before they get into the octagon. Well, maybe they didn't know. Maybe they already said it once and he decided to try his luck. It's bullshit is what it is. You, you can't let a guy get taped up, wrapped up, get your ankles feeling a certain way when you're warming up, and then get into the octagon. They're like your balls feeling a certain right. way? <laughs> I'm not saying it changed the outcome of the fight, but mentally it has to have well, some Belcher impact kind of on him. Smiley the first. I rewatched that again. He was kind of really, like he was almost like smirking the entire first round. He didn't fight the fight. Like, no. that didn't look like an Alan Belcher fight to me. It looked like something was off. And it could have just been that Michael Bisbing's striking was so point on. And Alan Belcher's striking was so point off because to fight with your hands down 
At least his, at least, I'll give Belcher credit for this. At least his chin was down when he was taking all those punches, but he was just letting Bisbing tee off on him. I don't know why. I, it didn't make any sense to me. No respect. No respect. Respect, Matt. Oh, here's a good one. When Rogan was talking about Bisbing, he's saying, oh, he keeps landing big right hands on Belcher. He says, let me take that back. When I say big right hand, <laughs> oh, yeah. I should say medium. <laughs> like, yeah. yes, it's true. But you got to credit Michael Bisbing for winning. He did employ uh, the more technical striking. He was landing more. And I don't know if that was just because uh, Belcher was standing in front of him with hands down, fucking chin, wait, just hit me, please. And he just looked slow and off his game. He fought Michael Bisbing's fight. And credit yeah. to Michael Bisbing for winning, and uh, you know what, his striking, look, he may have the best striking in the middleweight division, Inga. Michael, Michael Bisping, Bisping, maybe. you either. know what, I think he needs to fight Anderson Silva. Sure, not going to happen though. I think, I think Chris Weidman needs to go out of fight, I think you need to make Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping. Sure, you just want to see Bisping get destroyed. <laughs> I see what Pride you're rules, doing. Ingo! I Pride see, rules! I see what you're doing here. No, you don't see what I'm doing. I do. No. It's sick and twisted. Michael Bisping wants no pre-fight water. What? Is that what he said? Didn't you see that move, too? No. The guy tried to give him water. He's like, no water! He's like <laughs> no. very angry and animate about it. No, I don't know. I didn't see that It's the most awkward shit. And then... Didn't the, his the, corner know about this already? <laughs> you <would> think. <laughs> it was very weird. That's so but weird. then here's the other thing. What about that devil voice oh, yeah. in Bisping's corner? And, and there was like a red light or something? Yes. And I played it backwards. And do you know what it said? No. It said, have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones with the skin all gone. Bo, 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 John. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? That's freaky. Michael Bisping put the curse on John Jones. Probably. Did you see it? I saw it. I'm not saying that Michael Bisping broke his toe, but Michael Bisping broke his toe, Ingo. Well, some might say he did more than break it. <laughs> he fucking cursed him. It was either that, that or big hard. black cock. I don't know. Yeah. And then the last thing to mention in this fight, too, what about the eye poke at the end of this fight? In the same fucking eye that Belcher had the detached retina? Yes. Luckily, uh, it appears that he will fight again. He did not detach his retina again. Took eight stitches in the eyelid. But fuck, he was bleeding from his eye. Scary. Uh, it was just the... That'd be very scary. The thing I gotta ask, though, is why is Michael Bisping punching with open hands? I don't know. It was a left hook, it looked like. It happened. Here. <laughs> Gabosa! No. <laughs> I don't want my eyeball. Finger banger. Eye. Violated by your finger. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Fish hook. Yeah. It's all good. Fish hook. Oh, yeah. Button hook. Um, so you don't want him to fight Anderson Silva next? No, dude. That Fine. Was, you should know Bisping? Yeah. Didn't that happen already? No. Wasn't it supposed to happen? Probably. But Yushin Okami is top rank. I think Okami is three and uh, Bisping is four, so I think that fight has to happen if he can't fight Anderson Silva. So your choice is either Anderson Silva or Yushin Okami. I'll take Yushin Okami. Don. Excellent. He likes that one too. <laughs> I see no hope for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next for Belcher. Um, I know who I want him to fight, but he's fighting someone at UFC 162. I want him to fight Chris Lieben. Ooh. Because Alan Belcher's on a two-fight losing streak, and we need him a win. And we need someone who wants to stand a bang. Okay. Chris Lieben. I like it. Metro Cote. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. All right, let's move along. We'll get you out of here. Sponsors! We have GoDaddy.com. I forgot the promos. Is it still I got you. $2.95 nuts? Yeah, we got uh, $2.95.com. That's good for one.com or transfer with $2.95 nuts. We got 35% uh, off ending this month. We're getting fucking tomorrow. Like one day. Let's go 35 off eight. And then the last one, we have $4.95.com, but you can get three with code MMA nuts. Yes. Also, Defense Soap. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% on all your orders. Go there now. Buy your shit. Don't be square. 
be a fucking whatever. I gotta pee. Like no Shut other. Shut down then. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you mind really no. quick? Go. I had All to right. pee for like half an hour. And then we'll be back with the John Jones main event. And back for our fucking main event action. Ingo. Yes. Trail Sonnen. John Jones. Here's a question for you. What? Well, seeing how it was such a dominating fight, what would have happened if John Jones took the fight on like eight days' notice? Same result? I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't have broke a toe off. Maybe not. I'm just saying. Or maybe he would have. Maybe he would have lost. Who knows? Things happen. Did you think Jones would win this easily, though? He took fucking Chael down. He took the fight to Chael. Yes. Pretty shocking. He chailed. I'll chail Chael. That's what he says. Strange. Like John Fitch and Fitch. Yes. I don't Wait. know. I don't know. I mean, you... Come on now. <laughs> I, what I, on paper this did this looked quite one-sided no I, I thought i thought for sure chael had a, a fucking legitimate chance but you know he, he tried to make a fight of it just john's fucking wrestling is better than chael's and that's all that chael had to win but do you think the fight was stopped early um i don't know man i didn't rewatch it but at last night i felt like maybe they could have let it go it's a championship fight you got to give him another few seconds don't you Yes, I'm gonna blame Mulhall, even if he wasn't <laughs> roughing. Was him again. Fuck that guy. Yeah. What's up with the junior guy roughing the fucking main event? It, it actually wasn't Mulhall, but it was another little dude with like neck tats and shit. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Anyways, it's all good. Let's just blame Mulhall anyway. Fuck yes. that guy. Yes. I don't know, dude. Pretty crazy because John Jones seems unstoppable at this point. The fight with Anderson Silva seems like it's in his not too distant future. I don't even want to see it anymore. I don't give a fuck. I, I just, here's the problem I have that uh, the champions are just, I've said it before, the champions are too fucking dominant. So, DSP, Jones. It, it's really coming down to which, which of the champions is going to lose their title first. Yeah, Anderson Silva. Anderson's ben getting Anderson. old. Jones has, I mean, I have to put it up, probably a little video of this broken toe. I mean, he broke it himself. And I think you made that point. So, okay, Jones breaks his toe. We'll go back to the other discussion. His camel toe? His moose knuckle. It's all good. But he broke it on his own. So 15 seconds later, we have a, a new light heavyweight champion of the world? Correct, because dare I cite rule 1346-24A regarding injuries sustained during competition as per the official Unified Rules of MMA, if any injury sustained during competition as a result of legal maneuver is severe enough to terminate a bout, the injured contestant loses by technical knockout. So therefore, had Chael Sonnen survived another, what is it, 16 seconds or however long it was, um, I believe they would have stopped the fight because I don't think you can let someone fight with a compound fracture. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Fuck that. You should, if you want to fight, fight on. The crazy, Cut it off! <laughs> crazy thing is he doesn't even know it and it takes Joe Rogan to like, oh. dude, your uh, foot is broken or something. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't like, look he good. Brought, he, let's get him a chair. Let's <laughs> fucking sit down. Sit down. You mind if I interview you right now? You're good. That was the, I You're good. Like, come on. Just sit down. Weirdest moments in <gasps> Jones is like holding his belt. You could see like he's trying to keep from throwing up. He's just like, <laughs> gotta hold the puke in. Gotta hold the puke yeah. in. I'm a man. I can do this. It's good. It's good. Ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta get out. I gotta get out. <laughs> but oh. what about Joe Rogan pushing the agenda? He's like, fuck it. You got questions to answer, sir. Well, <laughs> you got a card canceled. It's time. It's payback. You gotta take yeah. it a little bit. You got enough adrenaline to take you through that. And someone said, to, I believe Chael stepped on his toe <laughs> <laughs> by accident. Well, the, he was doing his little like celebration moves where he was throwing a spinning elbow, and he almost caught Rogan with that uh, fake spinning elbow at the end or a little celebration dance. Yeah. But fuck, man, that was horrible. How do you not notice that? That's it's so just, sick. Well, it's the same thing when you look back at Tim Sylvia fighting Frank Mir, and Frank yeah. Mir breaks both his ar bones in his forearm, and then he's still fighting on the re I think it was Herb Dean's like, dude, your fucking arm is broken. This <laughs> fight is over. And you're fucked up. Sylvia's man. like, no, it's not. What are you? You're I'm fine. I love you, but that's crazy talk. <laughs> that's crazy. And you look at the fucking monitor, and then you can see like, boop, yeah. boop, boop. You're like, oh yeah, I guess that's broken. So I'll win via technical submission. Correct. Or lose via technical submission. 
Uh, Dana said when he walked into the octagon, he was talking to Chael, and Chael said to him, you know, Dana, I think I won that fight, and I think this is going to be very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. Even in defeat, he's still funny. Yeah. But what what's next for that guy? I think he should just stick to broadcasting. I think he should retire, right? He's been Anderson Silva, 0-2. Owen John Jones, Owen. I mean, what else is he going to do? Go up Paulo to Filio. Yeah, it's, it's just, one. there's no reason. He still has his wits about him. His marketability is as high as ever. He's awesome on the broadcast. He can still do his shtick on the broadcast and talk shit and whatever. And rub uh, lady announcer's hair. Yeah. Don't touch your hair. Why not? He's awesome. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's awesome on camera. Just stick with that, Chael. Yeah. Retire, man. He's 36, right? What'd you say? Yep. Time. That's crazy. Yeah. And next, well, the other thing he, that Sonnen was saying too, or Sonnen, sorry, Chael, how's that? Uh, he would maybe be open to a little Vanderlei Silva fight. Why? Remember, there's that oh, beef. Oh yeah, yeah which, beef. Weight, which weight class though? Whatever, probably yeah. catch weight, ninety-five. Silva did just fight Vitor. Uh, not Vitor. Um, he just fought at two hundred five. Fuck, who was it? It was in. It was in uh, Japan. It was Brian Stan. Yes. In Japan. Brian Stan in Japan, the man with the magic bus. I just hand. don't see that going well for Silva because I think Sonnen will just take him down. It's going to be probably not good. So we'll see. John Jones, though, I believe there's one person he has left to, to, to master at 205, which is Dan Henderson. There's that one for sure. Like, yeah. We still need that fight. And then Jones was actually calling out. Alexander Gustafson. Really? Which doesn't make any sense to me. Henderson makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They were supposed to fight. Guy gets injured, Chael takes his place. Right. Not initially, but after Later. the fact. Right. Correct. Make it happen, Ingo. Please. Oh. Moving mm -hmm. on. Ask the nuts. Hey, what was your overall take before we go into no. Ask the Nuts? On this card, was this one of the worst, best, strangest, weirdest? What kind of what 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 is your overall? Well, it was I, I was trying to say okay, April twenty seventh. What happened this day in history? Because it it was weird. So I, I researched like who was born, uh, what happened in history, who died on this date. There's nothing in there of interest. There's hmm. nothing. It's nothing surrounding the date. So I don't know. Was there a full moon? But I'll tell you what. Out of the 20 years that I've been watching the UFC, and that's kind of disgusting when I say that, I've never seen a stranger card in my life. No. Nope. From start to finish, there was so much fucking weird shit. And I don't even know, I, I want to say they jinxed it on the broadcast too, because early on, I think they made the comment like, this has been a really weird uh, set of events going forward. I hope we're not jinxing anything, even saying that right now. Because you could see something was coming, and something was dialed in for that main event, and sure as shit happened, yep. and it was just a matter of time, 15, 16 more seconds, you got a fucking new light heavyweight champion of the world. All right, you ready for some questions? Ready! There's only 17, Ingo. I'll ask 10 of them, if not more. First question, Jim Dwyer. Curious to what you guys think about street Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and sport Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Is it better to train with a great uh, BJJ practitioner like Comprito or travel a little further to train with Jeff Curran, who is affiliated with Pedro Sauer? I want to learn BJJ for the street aspect and don't care for the tournament side of it, being that I'm in law enforcement. Thanks, Jim. Oh, you're going to lead with this one. Yes, I Here am. We, we, uh, we talked about it a little bit before, so Well, Go ahead. I'll say this. Uh, Comprito's current teaching style is geared definitely more towards competition jiu-jitsu. He does have the ability to teach in a more traditional aspect of self-defense and whatnot, but I think he chooses to go the more tournament route because I think that's what a lot of people want coming into the sport. My opinion is that in order, if you're starting from nothing, you should train in the gi for at least six months and learn how to do some of the techniques, teach your body how to move the right way, and then from there branch out get into other things, maybe more specialized, like we had done Krav Maga, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but um, 
I can't speak for Kearns. The only thing I know about him is that I believe they're on a how much time you move you you put in system. And that's fucking horseshit. Right. I'll say that. <laughs> so if you do a hundred hours, you get a blue belt. Uh, I that doesn't. Think... You you have to be able to prove yourself. Right. You, it, you could, if you're a fucking, uh, no offense to retards, but if you're a fucking <laughs> retard, meaning that you're a slow person, and I'm somewhat retarded, when I'm uh, like taking uh, the jujitsu, it doesn't stick with me so much, <laughs> no, no, okay? No. Um, I need shit broken down. Like, I need, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, this is step four. Yes. I can't see a move and go, fa 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 fa. I have to break it down mentally and go, one, two, three, four. Yes. And then sometimes it goes up to 17. And yeah. Matt is fucking lost. I'm like, dude, I need this in four moves. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Krav Maga made a lot Better of sense to me because everything yeah. got broke down step by step. Yeah. But with saying that, the Krav Maga was great for the mental aspect, great for the physical aspect, yeah. terrible for the technique aspect. Right. So you, you have to incorporate that yes. with someone that can correct your technique yep if that makes sense yes and as far as like the any style and even the jujitsu if you're you're taking it and looking at it from a street level you're gonna have to if you're taking it with the gi you're gonna have to throw out a bunch of shit like right. personally i always liked the the no gi aspect because i thought that's more real world or realistic for you sure but i guess it depends like what's your uniform do you consider your uniform more like a gi if you're a police officer, or do you consider uh, a t-shirt and a fucking pair of shorts more like your uniform? Right. But yeah. either way, you're still gonna have to look at each scenario and say, okay, I'm never fucking pulling guard if no. I'm a police officer. Not in a street fight. Fuck that, I wanna be on top, and actually I, I wanna try to avoid going to the ground because again, if you're dealing with multiple attackers, last place you wanna be is on the ground, but Having said that, you still need to know how to work off the ground because if you get put in that position, you right. need to know what to do. Correct. So it's it's just going to be a give and take. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna every fucking discipline you take, there's going to be good and there's going to be yeah. bad, and you're gonna have to decide what what makes the most sense for me. And no one's gonna be able to tell you that except for yourself. Yeah. Well, plus there's a striking aspect. You know, I think for sure, like Muay Thai is one of the best I think you can learn. Because it's the most realistic, you know. And forget kickboxing and taekwondo and uh, karate and nah, you know, Muay Thai is more. I think is the most. You know, if you know how to use all throw of your a knee, weapons. throw an elbow. Yeah, yeah it's because you want to protect your your fucking hands and yep. your feet. I mean, I it was funny. I was just telling Ingo today. I, like, I elbowed my dog in the fucking skull. Did it hurt? Hell no. But if that was my fist, animal abuser. It was my dog's <laughs> fault. I stuck my elbow out, and she jumped right into it. That cunty doggy. She keeps jumping on me, and I just yeah. stuck my elbow out just to see what would happen. Yeah. She jumps into it. I just feel like to kind of go back beat to this, beat this dead horse. Go back in. I feel like when you train nogi, there is a bigger uh, potential for you to be sloppy because strength can overcome technique. That's very, why I very, liked it very, very much. Easily. So whereas in the gi. It's all technique, and if if you are technically sound, even a person that's fifty pounds lighter than you can get you. Whereas that's in, why I don't like it. <laughs> I don't no, like it one bit. Yeah, I know. But in nogi, it's sure. not it's not really possible because if you're stronger, you know you can usually win just by brute force. So, I guess what I'm saying is, don't be a bitch. Come to Compritos, try it a little bit, right, and then decide from there. I don't think Kearns is the right place for you, but maybe like the Krav Maga thing we were doing. There's our old instructor, George. Yeah, Adams, he is, where the fuck is he trained? It's like Wheeling? White Tiger Taekwondo. I'll have to, I'll post up like this yeah. crazy motherfucker because you can train under him. It's good to train on him. He's, He's crazy good. and he'll work your shit. Yes. And then they also, I don't know if he still does it, but they used to do special seminars. This is like a police only seminar mm -hmm. where you can get a little more does. specialized. Yeah, we're going to do uh, firearms training or defense against weapons, defense against guns, Gun! defense against knives. <laughs> yeah. How many exits are there? There's I'm fucking one. three, motherfucker! Well, in this Christ. room, there's two. Really, one, one and a half. <laughs> yeah. I just, can't go out that, but I might be able to go you there. You can go through there. You can go out there, too. So, a really good question, and maybe we'll follow up with some people. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need to do is go on tour, like, <laughs> show, here's what you can get at the Comprito. Here's what you can get at the... 
George, oh, my wife just got home. Okay. George Studio and whatnot, so. Okay. All right, moving right along. Andrew Wilkinson asks, uh, who do you think would win in their prime? Bass Rutten versus Randy Couture? Rutten. Pride rules. Rutten. Fuck yeah. No question about that shit. Knockout. And some people were even saying they'd love to see it today. I'd have no problem with that, but yeah, unfortunately, Bass Rutten has some... Neck, neck and knees, back issues where his back. right arm is atrophed like uh, smaller than my 11 year old daughter's it's kind of i believe randy scary. would school him right now right now yes but maybe a couple of years ago you know he did leg kick the shit out of ruben villarreal that was supposed to be chemo leopold but chemo tested positive for steroids mm. shocking you like to say it is it is all right anthony tiger says clearly uh we're gonna go back one sorry greg lafountain says dana white said that chael has been offered jobs to do commentary for sports other than mma would you like to see him call other sports such as football or baseball i, I, I like don't... chael anywhere he is so put him in put him in let's see what happens Fuck monday night call football. some hockey bitch monday night football all good yes can't be worse than dennis miller he was or he was kurt menifee yeah da -da 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 -da. anthony tiger clearly cody mckenzie will never be a world beater but how impressed were you guys with his performance against garcia and with the beat with the fight being so one-sided does dana have no choice but to cut garcia now five yes. losses in a Give row me a break he's done cody got the shaft on this one i think he should have had sub of the night his transition from guillotine to mount to triangle, it was, it was, it was pretty, he made it look effortless. And I think that uh, people don't give him enough credit for his jujitsu. And Garcia should be cut. I mean, Jesus Christ, five in a row. <laughs> I, well, I want to say, I think McKenzie may have had the best post fight interview ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad for that guy. He's just waiting and waiting. Joe Rogan, where are you, Joe? Joe Rogan, no where love are for you. you? You should have him on the podcast. That was terrible. I felt bad. There's a lot of commotion up there. There is. Andrew M asked, uh, do you guys know what the call would have been if the ref stopped the Jones fight due to an injury? Yes. Technical knockout. Yep. If uh, Why are pokes that are accidents that cause a fight to end scored a technical decision, but accidental injuries are TKOs? My brain hurts after this card. Wait. Why are pokes that are what? Why are pokes? Because oh, they went past the second round. Uh, I thought you were going to say past the second knuckle. That's the, the rule. If it, if the fight is past the second round, then it goes to the scorecards. And I believe, I think there's a rule that says the current round does not count. But apparently, in those they've been scoring them. Yeah, it's I, supposed to not count. So I don't know. I bet it changes state by state. I'm sure. Inch by inch. In this room, we fight for that inch. You see that commercial? <laughs> no. Well, I like that. If I'm fighting for anything, I'm fighting for the inch, inches. God damn it! Life is a it game should. of inches, Matt. It should. And the inches we need are everywhere. <laughs> you never saw that? No. Any given Sunday? No. Dude, one of the greatest football movies ever, but Al Pacino, perhaps in his greatest two and a half minutes in his career. Okay. You get, just, just when we're done here, just look up Al Pacino inches. You, when you watch that... Am I going to get like a big black cock you're, just flying you're gonna, across you know, the you're screen? Gonna, you're going to run through a brick wall. That's how fucking pumped you're going to be. Am I going to be on the program? Because if I'm not on the juice, no, no. the juice is loose, you Ingo. It, you got it. It's inspiring. Whoever wrote that is amazing. As he makes another drink. What's it's the next good. question, sir? Uh, well, I have to reload. Uh, this is going to be tricky. So let me pour half of this, and then I'll hit up the question. I'm not fucking around. Matt doesn't drink beer anymore. He drinks booze. <laughs> I'm, straight I'm a booze. man, Ingo. I grow hair in places that other people don't. Nice. All right. Uh, Dino Turkic asks, if you can discuss whether Shun Sonnen should retire or not, we kind of did that. Yeah. Uh, he did lose in convincing fashion to Jones, but that was expected, and he was on the brink of defeating Silva. Other than Anderson and maybe Chris Weidman, I don't see anyone else in the middleweight division giving him any big problems. Since Silva is now looking for the Jones fight, it's unlikely he will retire if he loses uh, to John Jones. If Silva leaves, Sonnen could easily, could very easily dominate, dominate the middleweight division. What are he your could. thoughts? I do not believe Anderson Silva wants any part of John Jones. 
I think the fight he's looking nope. for is George St. Pierre. That's a safer fight. Who the yeah. f are you kidding me? You know what John, or, uh, fucking Anderson's kryptonite is. It's wrestling. And obviously you can see who the best wrestler in MMA is right now. And it's fucking Jones. John Jones. He's yep. never been put on his back. And the two best guys that had the opportunity to do that were Rashad Evans and Chael Sutton. And neither of them were able to. Couldn't do it. It's an interesting question. I believe Anderson Silva will fight down in weight class, not up. So, But I do believe that Sonnen is the second best middleweight in the world right now. I believe he can, he can beat anybody in that weight class except for Anderson Silva. Mm -hmm. And on a good night, could beat Anderson Silva. But he missed, Without the mental laps. He missed his opportunity. So, unfortunately, you know, two mental lapses. Eh. Or, yeah, this, the, well, the last fight, I don't think there was a mental lapse. It's like you Spinning just got back fist? beat by a... forget about that? <laughs> well, I'm not talking about the Anderson fight. I'm talking about the Jones fight. Oh, yeah. That, no. There was no mental lapse no, there. He just, just got He handled. didn't... He just yeah. got beat by a better fighter. That's all. And the stronger, better wrestler all around. Yep. Interesting question. Connor Hill says, uh, after Phil Davis won, did he go home and rough up his lady friend? Oh, too soon. That was low. That was low. <laughs> Well, is it roughing it, up if she asked for it? You don't know what happened. That's all I'm saying. It's a custody battle, and things desperate people say desperate things. Do they have their children, children between us? Yes, and that's between why them? they're in this custody battle. Oh, I didn't realize he had a kid. Yep. Moving right along, Anthony Tiger asks, Also, which matchup do you like better, Nelson versus Hunt or Nelson versus Cormier? I think we said Hunt. that. Hunt? Right? Yes. I'm skipping that one. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Brandon Weinstein, Misha Tate versus Roy Nelson. Who you got? Uh, are I they got fucking it. or fighting? That's the oh, question. well, I'm going to answer. It's, it's fucking Ron Jeremy, okay? Because that's exactly what it's going to look like. Hey, did somebody order a pizza? <laughs> nice. Move pizza right sounds on. good right now. <laughs> what else I going to say is food. You haven't thrown down. We haven't had like a food ga gamut in a while. Maybe we need to have a cooking show. MMA nuts on <laughs> food. Cooking. Jesus. Here's us in the kitchen. We're <laughs> fucking smoking it up. I got this natural bacon. I ate all these grass fed steaks. I'm going to make your ass some chalapis this year, man. You just watch. You chalapi When you eat those things, you're, you're going to be like, this I'm gonna is lose heaven. my mind. Yes. <laughs> Straight meat. Shit. I, had, uh, I just got, a, I told you I got that eighth of a cow. So I had all these different cuts of steak. So Did I that include the cock and balls? Of course. <laughs> Well, moose, moose that's, that's what I request first every time. I want the cock. It's a whole pound. I don't even cock. serve that to my family. It goes straight in my <laughs> mouth, it's right uh, down. It's you cook it first. Throw. No, it's I prefer raw. it raw. You like raw. Cock. Real men take it raw. Raw cow cock. It's like sushi. You go. And then the balls, you just juggle them and. No, I just I usually stick those up my ass. Nice. And then I regurgitate like ben, them. Benoit balls. Yep. <laughs> you got to keep those muscles do, tight. Juggle them in your hands. Got to keep them tight. That's fucking funny. But the... <laughs> anyway, going back to the eighth of a cow, what I was going to say is I had the three different cuts of steak. So I, I believe there was a sirloin, mm -hmm. there was a strip, and there was a Delmonico. Ooh. The, so, Mon the Monaco is the big one? No, they were all... I only had <clears throat> one pound portions of each steak. Okay. But I, I did like a taste test with my family to see like which cut they liked the best. And every one of us liked the Delmonico oh, well, the best. I was going to say the New York strip usually gets the high rating. Not... How'd you cook it? Medium. I don't go medium Real? rare. Yeah. Okay. Smoky. Nice. Delicious. Yeah. Smelt like bacon. Tastes like love. <laughs> so I make it with love. Did you do the trick of uh, letting it get to room temperature first? Yep. Okay. Always do. I give it a good half hour. That's the, that's the key. For you people out there who are barbecue fanatics, that's the key. Everyone fucks it up. Pull it out of the fridge, let it sit for like a half hour to an hour. Let and it get you nice season and, it at, yeah. at the same time, too. Correct. Break it down a little. Yep. And then a little bit once. That's it. One time. You can't do more flips. No. I'm talking to you, Brian. Does Brian you go like, multiple like a hamburger? <laughs> He's like, you fuck it, you <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm at his house. Like, <laughs> don't like you do fucking Don't you dare dragon. fucking <laughs> multiple flip this shit, brother. Uh -huh. I will stab you. I will stab yeah. you with this steak knife right now. Well, you can do that once and then turn it a little bit and then flip it. That's what I like. I don't, I don't even go for the cross the marks. Turn. Yeah, I like the cross marks. I'm not fancy. Oh, good. It's all but about I do like taste, my medium rare. Bloody. 
Still one of the best steaks I ever had was uh, in Indianapolis, I have to say. A place called uh, St. Elmo's. Not cheap, but quite tasty. I think, they, I think they have a cow out back and just chopping it up. It's still alive, they're just cutting meat off of it. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> totally grass fed, right? No. No. I don't think There's so. There's a different taste though. I don't think so. It's true, that grass fed to non grass fed. Yeah. It's a little leaner. I, I'm not sure. This was a grass fed cow? It's the only way I'm rolling. If I'm eating beef, it's grass fed. Nice. I want to make that commitment to chicken, but unfortunately, I eat too much chicken. It's, it's crazy. I can't make that move yet. Right. You'll be fine. It's all good. Cancer is in all of our futures. Don't worry. Got any knowledge? No. Game of Thrones. This bitch has got dragon. She's fucking some shit up. That's all I'm gonna say. I like it. She like she's like, ah, I speak your fucking pussy language. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard all your gibberish. Blah blah blah. I fear you not, motherfucker. Guy went white in the face. He's like, oh fuck. Yeah. The dragon, none too happy. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler! Ah, it's been a week. If you haven't seen it now, go fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, son of a bitch. It's all good. Good. Shut it down. All right. That's Let been this week's edition of MMA Notes. There is a lull in MMA. I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we'll do something. We'll, we'll have a show. We'll Maybe. have topics. Potentially, we may have Duke Rufus on. It dep depending his management and his ability to get on Skype with us. But we are ready, Duke, if you're watching. We are ready for you, sir. My name is Inga Weigold. Matt Griffith. See you next time. Thanks for playing.